following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and you are joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a program where we talk about issues or topics based on the youth. Now today we are going to talk about a very sensual or a um, very common topic which is music. Now when you think about music a lot of people can sing, they can dance to it, they can play it, you name it like music can be so touching towards you and music can mean something different to each and every person. So now we're going to talk about the youth interest in this industry and about music production and to talk about this topic I think we have the most uh, ideal guest on the show who is Ridma Veeravardhana who is a famous musician at the moment here in Sri Lanka and I don't think we need an introduction to you Ridma pretty much everybody knows about you and I've been listening to your music since recently also and I've been enjoying them and so thank you so much for taking the time today and we are in the midst of a rehearsal as well and so to start off the discussion Ridma why did you get into music how did you and what did you enjoy about it well uh, music has been the in from the small days or from my childhood has always been part of our I guess my growing up uh, so different music genres and uh, different um, classic, classical, different, I mean, even, uh, uh, how do you say, Nati Gita, Nurti and all of those things were a part of my growing up. Um, so, I, and anyway, like I was the person who was always uh, performing at the family functions and stuff like that. So that was there and um, and music has, all, so it was very normal to me that, you know, music was a, very important part and uh, uh, as I uh, and as a career maybe um, I was actually doing another job I was uh, I was working there for eight years and um, I realized that this is what I like to do and this is where my I find my peace um, Zen as I call it and that's why I uh, left all of that and focused my energy on music which I love to do did you ever think that you'll become a musician um, well, it was a far-fetched dream. If you are, if you had asked me like 15 years ago, right, when I when I started, actually, it was exactly 10 years ago. 2013 was when I kind of put my first step into recording my own song sort of situation. Um, so uh, yeah, at that time, you had to either be a, uh, a winner f or like you had to have taken part in a, a reality show program and uh, become famous through that, or you had to be a second generation of uh, a senior, I, I mean, of a, uh, of a uh, yeah, a yeah. second, uh, another artist. Um, so, um, but at that time it was, uh, I think, uh, I had a, I had to learn a lot of things on my own. And uh, thanks to social media and uh, the digital space, I was able to uh, put my work out and uh, kind of get the gauge. Uh, what was your ambition before you thought of becoming a musician? Well, uh, becoming a musician was also one of the ambitions that I had, but you know I was toying around with it. So at that uh, that was the time, uh, 2009, if I'm not mistaken, I actually took part in a reality show program, uh, which I couldn't get through to the uh, thousand. Um, and then yeah, and I kind of uh, pushed that uh, dream aside, and I wanted to become a movie director. So if I, uh, I still have that, so at some point I will uh, kind of make that a reality as well. So now at the moment have you taken this occupation up as a full-time career? Yes, I have. That. So what was your first step when you stepped into this industry and um, did you face any challenges? Um, 
Well, I, as I told you, um, I, it was back in 20, 2013 that uh, it was actually a coincidence. Uh, a friend of mine just uh, forwarded, uh, a, there was a Facebook competition that was done for Mother's Day, uh, a Mother's Day competition sort of thing uh, by a famous brand. Uh, and we were asked to send covers. So I was forced to do a cover and send. So I did the uh, Hindi song Ma and uh, send it across and they had uh, selected uh, I didn't know about it they had selected first uh, f the first the top three and they had allocated studios for us to do original music to or do original uh, tracks for the Mother's Day with a video so that's how I get to meet uh, um, Rani Laya and Charita and that's how and then I approach them again and then that's how uh, more music comes um, yeah that's how I started it Right, so tell us a little bit about your experience in releasing your first song, producing it, how did you feel, what you enjoyed about it? Um, so we did it uh, in, so actually there were, okay let's talk about the song that I just mentioned. So that was probably the first song that I could call my own, Obamage Amma, which was done for the Mother's Day. And that was a very proud and a, a very, um, I didn't, I don't know, it's a very strange feeling where, you know, it had to, it was actually um, it entered into a competition where with the three, the two other entries as well. So it was like a, on voting basis. So more than that, more than the competition, I was very proud of the fact that I did a song. I have an original, so that, so that, that was like a big deal for me. So yes, and uh, answering to the previous question that you asked, yes, there have been so many challenges right throughout from the beginning, figuring out step by step and still figuring out most of the things. So yeah, it's a challenge. As you stepped into the industry or if there are young people out there who wants to step into this industry, what advice would you give them? Like what should they keep in mind? Don't take anybody's advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just do what you have to do, what you've got to do. Uh, you are, what I believe is you're, you're here for a purpose and uh, uh, each and every one and for any aspiring, so just be honest with your work. So if you are to uh, kind of focus on making it a hit or something like that, then most of the time it might work, it, it will work, but I mean, I, I don't know. It just, for me, being honest to your, your creation is what really uh, hits or clicks with me. Even when I, as a fan, if I listen to a song, if I, if I see that this person has deliberately done something to, you know, kind of, market it in a certain way or you know kind of reaches uh, that kind of is a turn off for me I mean it's probably it's probably a problem with me but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if, if, you, if I feel that it's an honest work then it just resonates and so I you're telling each and every person should have a purpose of their own in creating music and just be honest just do what what is what comes from heart rather than you know following a trend or following somebody's following what's uh, going to be a big hit or you know trying to make it a yeah right so what is unique about your music what's the purpose that you want to put out through your music I'm um, again I'm still figuring things out mm -hmm. and I think that I have grown as a as a as a person and as a human be as a as a as a musician over this five years oh no how many years now you said 2013 yes that is when I started my first stop song but like I got my first break uh, when I officially j kind of entered the music industry, if you must say, is that would be in 2018 uh, with the Kuwaini music video, when, which kind of took uh, another turn in like uh, in terms of uh, a lot of people try to interpret it, uh, a lot of uh, ideas and a lot of covers and a lot of things it, it was a it, it came into a, becoming a discussion uh, uh, it, it's a subject to be discussed and um, yeah so that was one of the that was my turning point uh, and that was uh, it was after the music video that I even I I was approached for, uh, con for concerts as well and uh, yeah medias um, media stations t approached me and you know so on so all of that happened um, yeah, now yeah. when you said that you had to go perform for concerts, were you ever nervous at any point? Oh yeah, it still always happens. <laughs> you go on there, it's all flower, butterflies in the stomach. How uh, do you overcome that? 
I think once you once you go in there and face the crowd, just in the few few seconds, once you get the hang of it, and once you pitch your first note, I think you will you come. I I I I get comfortable once I you know kind of yeah. For I, I can recently uh, with a recent memory, I can actually recall that uh, I took the first half of the there were three sets in my, in my concert. So the first half, I was actually kind of getting used to the whole vibe it was a lot it was very overwhelming because it was my own concert and i had to remember all the all the lyrics and all of that it was a lot of work um so the first half i was a bit nervous so from the second and third i was kind of eased and uh, kind of let out <laughs> do you ever have the difficulty where you forget the lyrics of your own oh songs oh my god yeah <laughs> <laughs> happens how how do you overcome that just say you uh, you went black out on stage so what do you do from that point i bluff you bluff I bluff. I just, I just smile <laughs> and just, yeah, just do like that puppy face and just. <laughs> okay, so. My trade secrets. Trade secrets. Okay, so when talking about your song Queenie, when you first released it, what sort of support did you receive from your colleagues, your team, your band, composers, producers? How can you describe that? Um. Oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, the industry kind of knew the industry, as in the producers, the musicians, the singers. They knew my about my existence because I had my content was already out on YouTube and SoundCloud and on certain pa platforms. So it was uh, Queenie with Queenie music video. I kind of was able to break out of that niche niche audience that I had and. Uh, and they are kind of like ex explore into uh, a kind of like an intellectual audience and there was a master, it was a very vibrant, there is uh, a spectrum of when it comes to age. So it's, it's, uh, it, it allowed me to uh, kind of expand my audience and in a, in a very vivid way, not even in one certain directions, like in, 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 in a vivid way. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, like a... <laughs> All right. So, when creating your own music, what are the things that you should consider? So, you need music, you need a composer, you need producers. So, is there a specific process that you follow? Uh, well, uh, music creation, uh, what to get to what you hear at the end. Uh, it's, it takes a, it's a huge process. So, the process is kind of the same for almost any uh, any production but how you do it and in what scale is what how it differs and how much of effort that you put into it so um, there is music composing there is uh, lyrics uh, lyric writing then there is uh, arrangements music arrangements and there is uh, musicians like if there is live uh, and then uh, if it's programmed then that has to happen and mixing mastering it's a it's a huge process yeah, it's a very huge process. <laughs> yeah, so when considering that whole process, uh, what role do you play other than being the musician? The I singer, sorry. am the vocalist, yeah. I am the vocalist and I do uh, I do compose uh, music as well and I've, um, yeah, I've started writing as well. Great. So before we continue with our discussion, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. So before we end, we'll be going in. We'll be listening to a song of Rhythma. So Rhythma, what's the song we'll be listening? It's called Sarongale. It's from my latest album, Aha. It's not released yet, by the way. It'll be released very soon. So here you go. We'll be back soon. <laughs>
Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Ridma V. Ravartana and uh, Ridma V forgot to mention what exactly is happening here. We are at the Infinity Studios, what are you all rehearsing for, what's the procedure here? Yeah, so we are right now at Infinity Studios um, and we are practicing for a concert uh, called Ahasa. It's happening on the 1st of July. Um, so there's Mihidwari Ratna, Kavindya Adhikari and uh, Sachini Ranavaka and me. And also, I'll be singing uh, the song that we just uh, heard in the first segment, Sarungale. Uh, the composer here he is here, uh, Ranga Virasekara. So, um, yeah, so I'm singing it actually uh, uh, with the composer for the first time. So it's a, it's an exciting uh, concert for me. Um, yeah. yeah, we can see like the practices are still going on. Yeah, I'm supposed so to go in there. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sorry for that. Uh, the thing is now, when you take the music production, you have to get all of them together at the same time. Ha yeah. Have you ever had trouble figuring that out? Well, what, uh, where I had to actually face it very uh, strongly was when I organized uh, my, co my own concert, AHA. So that was when I had to kind of uh, gather everybody, the ensemble and uh, kind of coordinate with everybody. That, that was a huge production as well. So that was uh, a new experience. Uh, but other than that, I have been part of Nadagama and I, I know how it works. And uh, I mean, I am part of Nadagama and, and of course, Queenie concert as well. So I've seen uh, how the massive scale productions happen. But when I had to face it myself, it was, uh, it was different. What do you enjoy doing the most? Now you mentioned uh, the recent concert which is coming up also. Um, there are certain collabs, like the famous musicians are joining you as well. So do you think it's easier to do it that way or do it on your own? Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, going through this journey with a lot of other energies as well. Um, so yeah, and I've been fortunate uh, to be part of those uh, groups and clans and uh, kind of experience it together so yeah and okay. i hope to continue to do that as well because it's, it's boring to do it on your own <laughs> honestly it's, it's really boring 
Right. So, how can you describe the music industry at this moment? Um, have you faced any difficulties or how have people been taking it so far? Um, there has been a lot of immense support right throughout. Uh, and uh, and also there is a lot of there there are enough and more issues that's going on right now in the music industry when it comes to me um, so I don't think I have to go deep dig deep into it but uh, there's a yeah there is a lot of drama going down but just noise has so it ever affected you it has else? it has mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it now I've it's become part of the process and now I don't it, it did it did affect me but not anymore, it, it's just noise. Right, so do you have any inspiration in your life that you look up to, okay, this is the musician I want to follow or the styles or anything of that sort? Um, yeah, a lot of my influence is from the South, a South Asian region, I must say. Uh, when it comes to local musicians, I think Amar Siri Piris would be my topmost favorite artist who I kind of uh, followed from small days and uh, as, a, as a musician and as a, as a vocalist actually to uh, in terms of dynamics how you control the vo vocals and all of that um, and also um, musicians like A.R. Uh, AR Rahman, Kailash Kher, Arijit Singh for that matter very recent times uh, have all contributed in some way or the other to how I have perceived music and uh, yeah yeah, okay, yeah. so I what I've noticed in your music also there's like a fusion uh, between techno and then there's Asian music and so what made you want to make that collab? This fusion of music. Mm. Well, it organically happened actually. It uh, it so um, when it comes to so it's it's always what what. What I've heard right throughout my life that always I, uh, you know, that's, those are the techniques that I use uh, when it comes to singing. So it's all learned, learned uh, things that I have uh, t techniques, t like small, small, uh, how do I say it, that I recall from, from my mem bag of memories and, you know, kind of use it for, so I think. I don't know whether I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when talking about the music production or the lyrics or composing, yeah. how do you get those ideas? Does it always have to be connected with something emotionally connected to you? Uh, not necessarily, but uh, in most of the cases, uh, I have, I take my, I have my own interpretation about the lyrics because most of my in, uh, initial productions, I like the lyricist. Is, uh, the interpretation is somebody else. The, ly uh, the lyricist, the one who pens it, is someone else. Uh, so there are in instances where we have discussed what the topic is going to be about, and or there, there's a, there are instances where it's, you know, uh, it's the lyricist inter interpretation. But I have, I have kind of taken it my own way and like you know, kind of uh, personal uh, personalized or custom customized it. That's the right, right word. Customized, cus customized it, it yes. and then kind of uh, sing it in my own way. All right. So when you're performing, has there been any favorite performances of yours? Absolutely. Something which is memorable. I think the very recent AHA concert was one of the uh, uh, one of the very few times where I have thoroughly enjoyed and like you know you, I know when I when I when that Zen moment comes, when I actually vibrate from my body, like I, I start vibrating. So that happened several times in this concert. There are a few moments, when, but that has previously also that has happened on Nadagam stage, uh, on Kueni concert stage. Uh, different, yeah, it has happened at different different moments. It has. What's the most uh, memorable incident that you have, and have you had any flops on stage? Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah, when the uh, the uh, the pack goes away, uh, the the uh, right. near pack goes out. Uh, when you can't pitch, so that has happened uh, a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't fallen or anything. I haven't. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't. I can't remember whether I have embarrassed myself that much to call it a fail. But you know, going off pitch, those things it usually happens to any artist. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. human. Yeah. <laughs> Would you encourage any of the youngsters to get into the music industry at this point? Considering Again, don't children. take my advice. <laughs> uh, don't take anybody's advice. Uh, it's in your experience, in your opinion. Um, I think you will know. I think uh, you don't have to force it. You know that it's your calling and it's you have to do this. I think then that's, it's, I don't know. Um, is it a viable career yeah. to, for anybody to pursue? For me, it, it, again, it depends on the person. It yeah. depends on how you take it, how you how you see life also. For me, it is so far a viable uh, uh, career option. And, uh, and I have had, mind you, I have had uh, ups and downs. I've seen all of it and it still is a solid place and I'm ready to experiment and uh, yeah, do all the crazy things in the world possible through music and uh, yeah. How can you uh, describe the competition in uh, the music industry? Do you ever see any competition against you? Uh, or do you just take it as it comes? I just, just do my own thing honestly. There is a lot of noise. Again, uh, I can talk about myself, I can talk for myself. Not for the noise that's around. Noise, what I mean is like social media. Everybody has an opinion, so you know you can you can like my music, you can not like me, you can hate my voice, you can love my voice. So you know a lot of people will have different different opinions. So what is your question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, about competition in about the competition. About competition. Okay. Uh, I went off track right completely. That's okay, that's completely fine. It's just okay, what no, uh, like. Comp when it comes to competition, I think uh, um, what I do is what I feel. And uh, um, I have, I have my, my, I have a lot of colleagues along with me who I work with, who I am, who I am constantly, you know, in touch with or who I associate as close friends like, for example, Danit, Metun, Supun. Kanchana, so those are my contemporaries who are there. So there is no competition for me with those guys, mm -hmm. honestly. Like it's, it's like we're just doing a lot of work together. And yeah, I have not really thought about competition in such a way, and it it doesn't. All right. I don't so know. how would you uh, consider any song release to be a success? What is the definition of success to you? Yeah. Uh, okay. Success. Again, I'm also still trying to figure that out because I don't know whether it's just a number, whether it's a YouTube, uh, whether you can you can say that if you come on for trending one, whether it's a successful music piece or whether how like if you get a full house in the concert, I don't know. I really don't know what how you how can define. How would you consider personally? Uh, for me, honestly, like if I can jolly well without any hesitation say that this is my my creation and like if I'm able to actually listen to it on a head headset and like actually enjoy it that's that's what matters to me so that's that's successful okay so we have to go into another short commercial break and we are going to be listening to another song of Rhythmus of the newest album and what's the song yes. mm, let's listen to Sobana all right. all right okay we'll be back soon you're watching Gen XYZ
Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we've reached the last segment of today's episode and we were in discussion with Ridma. To focus our last segment, Ridma, I want to take uh, your ideas about the international industry as well in music. But before that, will you tell me, are you interested in singing your songs in different languages? Yes, I've already tried my hand at uh, Tamil. Uh, I've done a song called Sundari. Uh, going out of my comfort zone and also English. Um, I've done a, a new English song also for my album Aha, uh, so it's called Finally Alive. Uh, yeah, it's definitely going out of my comfort zone. It was one of the most difficult songs to, for me to record also because I don't... I'm more inclined towards the uh, Indian and the South Asian kind of language as well when I sing, so... But, you know, I tried. Let's see. <laughs> Haven't you ever tried it in Hindi? Uh, that's my next plan. Hindi is uh, always like, you know, I, uh, I'm i very fluent in a lot of like, you know, I, that's, uh, Hindi music has been part of me from small days. I used to listen to Bollywood growing up and also even right now I um, listen to a lot of Pakistani, uh, South Asian kind of music. So it's... Is there a specific reason that you like that type of music more? I really don't know. I think it just resonates with me more. That's all I, I know. Um, because, yeah, it okay. resonates more. Uh, like When uh, talking about the international music industry, have you ever made plans of going international? Um, again, this, um, it's not a conscious plan as such, but I want to, I want to, uh, I want to just not I want to just go and go out of my boundary and uh, like from the island and just experiment what's out there. Like for example, I wanted to go to India and just spend a couple of days. A friend of mine actually told me, just there's a lot of uh, Sri Lankan who I used to work with at some point. He actually told me, just come to Mumbai, there's a lot of opportunity, just come and just hang out and just explore. Uh, so I want to try that, I want to do that and there's lots of lots and lots of plans uh, that I have in store. Uh, collabs with foreign uh, musicians and even even inside the country so different we have different different genres and um, we have unexplored uh, music uh, um, how do I call it uh, yeah types that have not been really spoken of in the mainstream so I want to you know kind of Collab, do collabs with them maybe uh, yeah so and then you know bring them up as well all right uh, when you talk about the international industry in your context where do you think uh, sri lanka is at the moment in terms of popularity for music in terms of popularity mm -hmm. uh, i think there's a, uh, there's a, a lot of increased uh, knowledge uh, when it comes to how music should be consumed or how music can be consumed and peop, uh, the, the public, the audiences are exposed to a lot of uh, different varieties of experimented music, uh, experimental music. Uh, so you can't fool, fool the audience anymore. Um, have yeah. you ever so, thought, uh, have you ever done international concerts? In other concerts? countries? Oh well, yeah, I, I performed uh, with Nadagama in Australia and uh, yeah, and I'll be going there again uh, end of this year as well. Oh great, are we supposed to be expecting another concert internationally? Yeah, so I'll be going to Aussie. Again in yeah. Aussie? And I'm, at one point I want to have my AHA concert also uh, to tour around, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. Uh, did you cater to the Lankans in that country or? Was it an open concert? Well, it's Sri Lankan music. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of Lankans are supposed to come, like mm -hmm. the, the majority will be them. I mean, I'll be more than happy if my music actually kind of reaches non-Sri Lankans as well at some point. I mean, there is a lot of uh, feedback, but I mean, it's, it's uh, if you compare in a scale, it's not, you know, it's not as big. But uh, I mean, I think it's a slow journey and uh, so I think Sri Lankan music industry also is uh, a lot of musicians are ready to explore, are ready to uh, experiment a lot of uh, different things. 
So, um, and social media has given access to uh, a lot of talented artists to actually do their own work and to not be dictated by, uh, you know, the middle parties. Uh, you can definitely straight away reach the audience. So that's my goal as well, to at one point to create a model where the musician doesn't have to depend on so many layers in between to for for the music to reach to its audience. So and do you think social media plays an important role in a musician's absolutely, life? Absolutely, yeah. That's how I've come and yeah, I think my journey started with social media and uh, yeah. Um, has there any uh, has there been any critics so far for you for your music? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that happens. Yeah, it's how, part of the baggage. How did you take it up? Do you take it positively? I was do there take anything it positively. I, I do take it? it positively. Like if there is something solid or if there is some, uh, if they make sense, then I take it. But mostly I listen to my guts and. Uh, mm -hmm. To it, yeah. <laughs> Another part which I uh, couldn't yeah, because, touch on. Because you know, anybody can be biased when they come when when it comes to advice. Yeah, definitely. So that's why I said just don't listen to anybody's advice in the beginning mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to touch on was the production of your music video. What what sort of things that you keep in mind? Is it your uh, production or your ideas, or was it a collab? It's a collab. It's a it's a collaboration. Depends on depends on the production. Uh, so, uh, for example, Virame, um, you have to. Uh, all credits go to the directors, the uh, the DOPs, the actors, the makeup artists, everybody, uh, the colorists, the editors to make it look so beautiful. And it's 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 such a process. It's a, such a process that you can't you can't take credit for anything like individually. It's um, and um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a collaborative effort. So even for Sobana, for example, why there were so many ideas that I also put forward, and uh, Sahan uh, came up with beautiful con uh, ideas as well. So it was a the concept was a combination of both of our inputs, and uh, yeah. I mean, that basically showed your input <laughs> for the video because the actress was completely dressed in Indian style and lehengas throughout the music video. Actually, the, the main point being Kajol. Kajol is one of my favorite actors, so I had to include her there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so in the future, what more can we expect from you? Is there anything you can tell to the young people out there who wants to get into this industry? Because I believe we are reaching the end of our program as well. Is there anything important you can uh, get across to them? Yeah, when it comes to what I what I do for the uh, for the near future, there's, well, the album is coming. Album is supposed to come very soon, um, and also few more concerts from my heart series, and um, and I hope to work. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of collaborations with uh, foreign artists and. Just do the most uncomfortable thing and most. Uh, Wait, did did you say to unpopular do the thing? Oh, right. I really like to do the most unpopular thing, <laughs> not uh, not in a uh, unpopular as in not in a bad way unpopular, but like not the your unique. Thing. Um yeah, unique and I don't want to do the uh, thing that uh, the if, if there is like a formula to for for a song to become a hit, I do I I wouldn't follow that. I do something else. That's. That's like something that I just noticed recently that I've, I've actually functioned like that for a while mm -hmm. and I would probably do that also. Um, and it has worked for me. It can work for another person, it may not for work for another person. That's why I said, again, I can't give any advice. Mm -hmm. It's your own story, you write your own plot. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, then we've reached the yeah, end of our <laughs> yeah we've reached the end of our program as well, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule of practicing also and sharing your ideas with us and especially our audiences as well. Wish you all the very best with your new release thank also you so much. on your album and yeah. good luck for your upcoming performance as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me for your show and uh, having me uh, have this interesting conversation. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming here and uh, being a part of this whole process. And yes, come on the 1st of uh, July for the Hasa concert on at uh, 
independence arcade yes all See right <laughs> so we are ending off our program again with another song of rhythms of the new album that he just released let's enjoy that and just in case you can watch us on air you can always rewatch by catching us on our youtube channel youtube.com slash other there in english i'm so sanchanali stay safe and have a good night <laughs>